Well, let's go to the US now. Joining us is our Sky News contributor, Michael Ware. Michael, uh, thanks for your time as always. So Biden has been a no-show for a couple of days. Um, how should we be reading into that? I don't know if you should read a lot into that. I remember when I was in the Battle of Fallujah during Iraq 2004, and I know then President George W. Bush wasn't on TV every day talking about what we were doing. In fact, they closed the lid, as they call it, in the White House at about 11 o'clock this morning um, in Washington time. And then the president bunkered down. That doesn't mean he's not working. That doesn't mean he's not on the phones. That doesn't mean he's not getting briefings. Just because he's not front and centre, I, I don't know how anyone could read anything into that, whether it's a Republican president or a Democratic president. There's a lot more to be done than just doing press conferences. Yeah, and uh, Benjamin Netanyahu mentioned in his press conference a little bit earlier today, actually not a press conference, more a speech, uh, but basically said he's been in regular contact uh, with world leaders, and that includes Joe Biden. Now, Iran, the Iran question. What does the United States do with Iran now, Michael? Well, there's not much the United States can do with Iran because <clears throat> this is precisely what Iran's been doing since the revolution in 1979. It's certainly what they were doing to torment the Americans when the Americans occupied Iraq from 2003. The Iranians are very, very good at this game, if that's what we want to call it. They know how to find proxies across the region and they know how to support them militarily, politically and in terms of equipment and materiel. I mean, you know, Iran's ultimate game is the sheer crescent spreading from Iran through Iraq, through Lebanon, through Israel, which would be destroyed in their view, to the Mediterranean Sea. And there's very little that America can do, or even Israel can do right now, to directly counteract that, even though we know that Tehran had to have given the green light to Hamas for this operation, even though we know, and I can't confirm it, and I have no evidence, but I'm telling you for a fact, there are Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps, Quds Force officers, in Gaza right now, helping guide this fight. Meanwhile, Israel, while it's got Hamas to its south, it has Hezbollah to its north in Lebanon, another Iranian proxy, which for now has been held in check. They fired a few missiles. They've issued statements of some support. They had a small border incursion into Israel that Israel easily repelled. But Hezbollah is just sitting there, padded up on the reserves bench, ready to run on if Tehran tells them to do so. Well, I mean, that's frightening, isn't it? And you're right. I mean, Israel, as we know, surrounded by enemies. When Benjamin Netanyahu said this morning that the Middle Eastern landscape will now change forever, what do you think he means by that? I honestly find that a bit confusing because I don't think it changes forever. I think this is more of the same. What was changing and what is changing is that Arab states that used to ostracise Israel because of the fate of the Palestinians, including those in Gaza, are now normalising relations with Iran. And that began during former President Trump's administration. And it's continuing. And Saudi Arabia was getting very close to normalising relations. Secretly, behind closed doors, relations between Saudi Arabia and Israel have been getting much more normalised than mm. in any time in previous history. And that's miffed but Iran. Bat <laughs> we, and that has upset Iran. Mm. But so destabilising the Arab states to force them to support the Palestinians to force them not to normalise relations with Iran is clearly one of the strategic goals of this operation. We don't yet know yeah. what the real goals of this operation are because what we've seen so far, I would argue, is barely phase one.